Yo, 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 what is up, y'all? My name is Robert Donaldson, and welcome back to another college football pick'em video. This time, we're talking about week 10, and, you know, we've been having a good season of college football. It's been a little bit inconsistent, actually a lot of bit inconsistent, if I'm being honest. At the same time, when you're this much in the green, it's a good spot to be in. We want to keep building on it. We haven't really built on it as much as we probably should have built on it, but... This is a new week, and for those who are kind of wanting to follow the, the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday college football picks as well, as well as the World Series, as well as NFL, you can do so on Twitter slash X at RobDFB. And even in this coming week, we're actually going to be talking about some college basketball content as well, with that coming down the pike this upcoming week as well. So stay tuned for that. And before we jump into the picks, I do want to give a massive shout out to our boys over at Underdog Fantasy. This is a great platform, especially when you got NHL, NBA, college football, NFL, Major League Baseball is still on. There's a lot of content to be doing over there, things to be doing. If you're looking at the pick'em scene, if you're looking at the daily fantasy scene, there's a lot. And if you use RobDFB, code RobDFB, they will offer you a pretty sweet deposit match bonus as well. But with all that being said, y'all, let's jump into these picks. All right, first up, we are taking a look at the game of the week between Ohio State and Penn State. And this is in Happy Valley. It's not a night game. It's a noon Eastern kick, which I think eliminates some of that fan factor. Not a whole lot. I mean, I, I feel like those sometimes get a little bit drawn up to be bigger than life and, and bigger than what they actually are. But at the same time, this is still a great home environment. And Ohio State, you know, they, they struggled last week. There's no hiding that fact. Nebraska came in there and nearly almost won. It actually took a comeback from behind victory for Ohio State to sneak out of there. But at the same time, Ohio State is loaded with talent. They have the advantage in terms of, I think, the defense matching up with Penn State's offense, especially with Drew Aller kind of hobbled coming into this matchup. And yes, Penn State can run the ball, but... Other teams that have had success running the ball have struggled against the Buckeyes this year, and for that reason, I don't mind laying that three points here with the Buckeyes. I shaved off that half point on DraftKings, eating a little bit more juice. I don't mind laying the three and a half, but I kind of want to be conservative in these big, highly built matchups and take all the points I can get. So let's go ahead and lay the three points here for three units for our first bet here on Saturday. All right, next up, we are taking a look at another power conference matchup, this time with a lot less at stake, and it's a very obscure game that really has no meaning on, on a national radar, but we're taking a look at Stanford and NC State. NC State, Grayson McCall, he just called it a career uh, in terms of football and playing football and pursuing football because of head injuries and, and because of player safety, and obviously that's been an emphasis. We've seen this more and more over the years, but that being said, I think that's still a, an emotional blow when a player bows out like that, whether it's, you know, for good reason or not. And when you're looking at Stanford, they've been a mess as, as well this year in terms of being very, very up and down. Ashton Daniels has had a lot of injuries. He's going to be healthy for this game. And when he was healthy last time and they walked into Syracuse, you know, truly healthy, they, they were able to pull off a really nice upset with around this kind of similar line. And for that reason, I am totally fine taking those nine and a half points here for two units for our second bet here on Saturday. For our third bet here, we are heading out to the Big Ten where we have Northwestern taking on Purdue. And gosh, both of these teams have looked absolutely abysmal this season. Uh, more so Purdue, but Northwestern has certainly not been looking great as of late. They've been really falling off a cliff. And when you look at both quarterbacks, yeah, these guys can run the ball, but they really do not have a vertical passing game to speak of. And for that reason, when you also are combining, you know, the fact that these are two defensive heavy programs, if they have anything to lean on, Northwestern is leaning on their run defense. Purdue is just kind of learn, leaning on their blitz packaging and, and being able to muck up everything in the on the field. And for that reason, you look at the total of 46 and a half. Man, I feel like that's way too high, and this number is inflated because of what of uh, what their opponents have been putting on them in spots to make the total look more inflated than it actually is from their causation. So let's go ahead and take the under here of 46.5 for three units 
for our third bet here on Saturday. Four, pick number four, we are heading out to Fayetteville, Arkansas, where we have Ole Miss taking on Arkansas. And listen, Arkansas, the last time they had a major team step into Fayetteville, it was LSU. And Arkansas got absolutely punked for one, two, three, four quarters. And when you have a team in the SEC who is as good as Arkansas is, and I really do think that Arkansas is a good team, that lingers with you, that sticks with you, and that kind of drives you to perform better when you get that opportunity again. And, man, this is my last time really kind of trusting Arkansas in a spot like this, but, hell, I'm willing to do it. So let's go ahead and take those seven points here with Arkansas. Let's also take them on the first half money line here as well. All right, next up here, we are taking a look at a very odd-looking Big 12 matchup between Arizona and UCF and yeah I don't know if these two teams have ever played each other and certainly they haven't played each other within this conference it's just a weird looking dynamic it's the first program matchup that we've seen these two in in terms of being within that big 12 shell and when you're looking at UCF and their recent games man they have been run through the absolute gauntlet as of late and Yeah, they haven't really come out on the positive side of that gauntlet, but they have put up some pretty nice fights, and I still think that this is a very good, talented team. And when you look at the other side with Arizona, with Jed Fish gone, they've looked like a disaster. I mean, they just look not very good. And so when you're looking at a bottom feeder in the Big 12 in Arizona and a team that I think is more near the top than near the bottom in terms of talent with UCF, I am willing to lay the six points here with UCF and do it confidently. So let's go ahead and take UCF laying six points for three units here on Saturday. All right, next up, we have a major game in the Big 12 between Texas Tech and Iowa State. And listen, Iowa State is a very, very good team. They're complete in a lot of different facets this year for the first time in a long time under Matt Campbell. They are now not the hunter They're the hunted. They're undefeated. They're gunning for a playoff spot. They're gunning for a bye. They're gunning for a Big 12 championship. They're gunning for a national championship at this point. It's been a dream season for Iowa State. And listen, they are not even halfway through. Just kind of think about that from that perspective. And now they're going to get every single team's best shot. You know, they're not sneaking up on anybody. And Texas Tech, when you look at the last two games, their season and their dreams of a Big 12 championship have pretty much dissipated into nothing. And when you're looking at this type of matchup, it's gut check time for Texas Tech. It might be a scare spot for Iowa State where they're just kind of, you know, almost coasting or not coasting, but almost content of where they're at. And for that reason, I think there's a ton of value in betting on the team getting this many points, especially when you look at Iowa State. You know, they haven't covered this number in the last two games out. So let's go ahead and take Texas Tech getting the 13 and a half points here on the road and for an additional unit, let's take a first half money line stab here as well. All right, next up, we are taking a look at a very fun matchup between Texas A&M and South Carolina. And listen, this is in Columbia, South Carolina. This is going to be an amped up building. It's going to be a night game. And when you are factoring in the last time a big opponent stepped into Columbia, South Carolina this season, it was Ole Miss. And South Carolina got absolutely punked in a game that they were, they thought they were going to win, And to be honest. And I think they had the talent to win that game. They just couldn't show up offensively. And kind of like what we were talking about when we previewed Arkansas going up against Ole Miss this weekend, the last time a big opponent stepped into Fayetteville, you know, it was a, a team in LSU that ended up punking them. And That's kind of where I think there's a driving motivation. The last time that you saw your home field and, you know, a highly built opponent comes in there and just wrecks shop, I feel feel like that has to drive a good team. And South Carolina is a good team. They should have beat Alabama, if we're being honest. I felt like they were the better team in that matchup. Definitively, they should have beat LSU. They got robbed in that game from the referees because of a block on a quarterback on a pick six that got called back late in the fourth quarter. So... When you're looking at this team, yeah, they don't have the glossiest of records, but really, I think they've only officially truly lost one time this season. And 
for Texas A&M to come into this game off of the biggest win of their season so far, man, you want to talk about a, a mixture of the stars aligning, a letdown spot, a playup spot for South Carolina. I think South Carolina gets this thing done. We're getting two and a half points. I say we take them, and I say we make it the biggest bet of our college football season so far. So let's go ahead and take those two and a half points here. And for good measure, let's go ahead and take a stab here at the money line here as well. Next up here, we are taking a look at a very fun ACC matchup between SMU and Pitt. And Pitt is undefeated. And they're coming to this game really trying to make a statement and take the ACC and all of college football by storm and really prove that they belong inside that top 10, inside that top 15, where they're kind of getting overlooked by the committee right now in terms of where they're being ranked, how they're kind of viewed in terms of their wins so far on the schedule. But if they beat SMU, there's no questioning that. At the same time, I think SMU is a far better opponent. And when you are looking at SMU, I think they could absolutely run up the score in something crazy. Like we're looking at 41-7 type matchup here. That's honestly, I, I know Pitt fans might hate me for saying that. And I don't think that Pitt's a, a bad team. I just don't think they're one of the best teams. And I think there's going to be a lot of losses coming for Pitt down the road here. And I think it starts here. So let's go ahead and lay the seven and a half points here with SMU. And let's do it pretty confidently here for three units as we head into Saturday night. All right, for our last bet of Saturday, we are taking a look at Colorado State going up against Nevada. And Nevada has had a couple rough weeks in a row here. They lost to Fresno State in a very close matchup against a good Fresno State team. Then they had to go travel out to Hawaii, which is never an easy location, no matter how good Hawaii is. That's a tough travel spot, and it proved to be a tough travel spot in that game. And when you look at Nevada getting, you know, plus money or even money in, in terms of the money line in this game, I, I think that's just kind of a product of the, the non-glossy looking record here. So let's go ahead and take Nevada confidently, and I do mean confidently, for four units on the money line. I think they absolutely roll in this matchup. All that being said, I really want to thank you guys for checking out today's video. And if you do want to show some love, drop a like down below, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends on social media, and even drop a comment. I'll definitely reply. But with all that being said, y'all, I will see you in a future video. Take it easy.